Hey, it's Alyssa from RimWise, your go-to guide to Rome. I'm standing here in St. Peter's Square to tell you about the new rules for visiting St. Peter's Basilica from the Vatican Museums. It used to be that you could take this secret shortcut. I used to tell you about this great secret shortcut from the end of the Vatican Museums, the Sistine Chapel, into the Basilica. It's no longer the case. You can no longer do that, except if you follow the rules. So I'm gonna tell you about the new rules and how you can visit St. Peter's Basilica after a visit to the Vatican Museums. Ready? Here we go. So when you visit the Vatican Museums, and the last thing that you visit in the Vatican Museums is the Sistine Chapel. It's an amazing thing. You get to the end of this two hour visit and you're standing there and oh my gosh, it's incredible. Next, you want to visit St. Peter's Basilica. So there is an exit to the left of the Vatican Museums that takes you all the way back to the front of the Vatican Museums. Then you have to walk all the way around Michelangelo's walls and come in here to St. Peter's Square and stand online to get in to see St. Peter's Basilica. So that's option number one. And that's gonna be one of your options from now on. I used to tell you about this great shortcut on the right. You would exit the Sistine Chapel from the right and there was this little ramp that you would go down and you'd wind up in St. Peter's Basilica. Well, the shortcut still exists, actually. The problem is you cannot take this shortcut if you're not on a tour. So what does this mean? Basically, you guessed it. The tour companies and the Vatican, they have decided to make sure that only people on tours can take that secret shortcut. It used to be a way for the tour companies to say, hey guys, this is the big advantage of taking a tour. You get to go on this quick, entry into the Basilica from the Vatican Museums. But a lot of people knew about the shortcut. I wrote about it. It was easy to do. They didn't really check. Now they are checking. Everything has changed. So for anybody to visit St. Peter's Basilica from inside the Vatican Museums, they have to have this proof that they've paid this one euro 50 fee. But not only that, they have to have registered and registered the guide's name. So for a big tour company, no problem. They just register all of their guests on the tour. They pay the euro 50, fine. For a private guide, same thing. The private tour guide is gonna go on to the website, the Vatican website, register his or her clients, pay the euro 50 and get the same proof of registration and payment. You as a just regular visitor without a tour, you can't do that anymore. They are asking for this proof, they are checking, and if you don't have it, you will not be able to access St. Peter's Basilica from inside the Vatican Museums. The bottom line is, the only way to have access to that shortcut now is gonna be on a tour. Whether it's a private tour, or a group tour, or a tour, obviously, through that you've booked through the Vatican Museums. Okay, so what are your options for visiting St. Peter's Basilica? In the first place, I have always been of the opinion that visiting the Basilica separately from the museums is a great idea. Because when you try to combine the Vatican Museums and all the art and architecture and the splendor and the beauty in there, and then you come here and it's a whole other, it's like a museum by itself. It's like you're visiting two museums in one day. So if you can split that visit up anyway, I would recommend it. But let's assume that you wanna come do these things on the same day. I would suggest, as I often do, to come to St. Peter's Basilica at seven o'clock in the morning. I always suggest this because it's gorgeous. There's nobody here, almost never anybody here. Uh, they are having mass already in the Basilica at seven o'clock. All the little chapels are having, uh, they're having mass in different languages. And because it's so early, it's just almost never busy. Uh, sometimes now we're seeing in high season that there are some tour groups coming down here at 7 a.m. but even if they do, it's very, very few. So you will not find a line at seven o'clock in the morning and it's really worth it for the beautiful light in the Basilica that you get at that hour. Then you could climb the dome and then come back down and head over there, make your way around the walls to the Vatican Museums for an early morning visit. Book that in advance, of course. Then when you leave the Sistine Chapel, you're done. That's a full morning. The other thing you can do is visit the museums, go out the front the normal way and come back around the walls and coming back into St. Peter's Square and waiting in the lines, the security lines to go into the Basilica. Another thing you can do if you get a chance to visit St. Peter's Tomb, when you finish visiting St. Peter's Tomb, you pop out into the Basilica. So that is a way to visit the Basilica without any lines. Another thing you can do is buy, it's free to get into the Basilica, but you can buy a skip the line ticket. They are usually about 15 euros and lots of different resellers sell this ticket. So you can get this, it's called priority access and basically it means you don't have to wait in the big security lines like everybody else. You go through security, but it's a shorter line. So 
we're here in St. Peter's Basilica, actually in the Loggia, just in front of it. And I just want to make sure you know how to be dressed when you come visit this amazing church, or really any church. Uh, you should have something to cover your shoulders. It's summer, so I have a scarf that I just keep in my bag, and I put it on when I visit a church. I've got a dress that is coming just to my knees. You want to make sure that your knees are covered. So really it's about modesty. You don't have to be dressed up. You don't have to be dressed in a fancy way. You can be in jeans, long shorts. As long as your knees are covered and your shoulders are covered, you're good to go. So Sunday, the Vatican Museums are closed, but it's actually a good day to visit the Basilica. Now that you have a hard time combining the two in one easy visit, if you're not on a tour, I would suggest coming to visit St. Peter's Basilica on a Sunday. First of all, it's a little less crowded, believe it or not, because you don't have all the people coming to the Vatican Museums. Also, you can attend the Angelus in the square if the Pope is in town. And also, the security measures are a little bit different, making it easier, the flow is easier to get onto St. Peter's Square and into the Basilica. During the week, uh, the security lines are really, really long and they start in the square, so somehow they wind up wrapping around. Now you have the security a little further back because they have it in preparation for the Angelus and it just makes the flow in the square and leading into the Basilica a lot easier. So Sunday's a great day to visit St. Peter's Basilica if you don't mind breaking it up from your visit to the Vatican Museums or if you're not planning to visit the Vatican Museums at all. Thanks so much for watching my video all about the new rules visiting the Basilica and the Vatican Museums together or not. I hope that you found this helpful and if you did please hit the like button and subscribe. See you at the next video. Ciao for now.